Why, hello there. Today we'll be looking at a uh, counterfeit Samsung uh, charger brick. And this one's particularly interesting because um, like from the outset, they kind of did their best to make something that looks very convincing. This seems to be a recurrent feature of counterfeit uh, Chinese stuff. Like most Chinese companies have kind of gone away from the like the real blatant copying. But even when they copy, they've become much better at it uh, lately. However, there are still like clear differences. So in case you weren't able to tell, uh, the counterfeit one is uh, this one. And if I point out some stuff, uh, it's going to be really obvious. So uh, first up, uh, there's the logo. Uh, you can see the Samsung letters, uh, they're way too wide. And the, the fun thing actually with this one is that the uh, original listing, I unfortunately, it has been removed uh, because I bought this like uh, more than half a year ago. Uh, but the original listing had like just a photo of the original Samsung adapter. Uh, so it's pretty crafty. They, uh, it's pretty much impossible uh, from a distance to uh, know exactly which one you got. So as I said, the logo is all wrong. If you know the Samsung logo, it has like uh, more letter spacing. You can, you can kind of see it. I'll put them next to each other. It, it clearly isn't the right font. Now, otherwise, uh, the logos, uh, they're different. Uh, there is no EAC. Uh, logo on there. Um, interestingly, there there is more on it, but it's like in a different arrangement. I, I don't know what's going on here, to be honest. Now, likewise, the uh, actual Samsung adapter seems to be a continuous molding of some kind. I'm not sure how they did this. Maybe this is just ultrasonically well, and it's really done really well. Here, uh, they do have a lid on it. I think I will be able to pop that open. Uh, I haven't opened it yet. Now, funnily enough, the uh, USB port is the other way around. So probably the PCB is on the other side. You can see the, uh, the molding line, or this is probably a separation line, very obvious on the counterfeit and uh, pretty much non-existent on the Samsung. The uh, Samsung adapter weighs 38 grams and the counterfeit one is considerably lighter at 29 grams. By far the most annoying thing about these replacement adapters from a user's perspective is that they make just this uh, annoying whining sound. Uh, obviously they, uh, they have a flyback transformer in here just at the wrong frequency. It's just within hearing range and you can hear it from across the room. Uh, By contrast, the genuine Samsung. Just slide it out, possibly. Excellent. So, uh, this is an interesting one. The uh, pins from the uh, housing, they stick through. So there's like a metal pin going through the plastic here. And that is grabbed by these contacts. But they are kind of springy. They're like, the only problem with that is, um, this is such a common occurrence in cheap electronics. Uh, these contacts are just regular nickel over copper, I think maybe even nickel over steel. And the same goes for the context. Let me just, it's very hard to get that on camera. So I'm just looking at it off camera. Yeah, it looks like they're just nickeled, uh, nickeled steel. Those when they rub on each other during insertion, during production, but also when they rub uh, against each other, just in normal use, like if you wiggle the USB connector, this, this PCB will move just ever so slightly and rub off that uh, nickel coating. And it's just immersion coated. 
So it's not that thick. It's like a couple tens of microns. So eventually you will rub through. You will get dissimilar metals uh, rubbing against each other and uh, essentially rusting on each other. And this will eventually uh, lead to bad contact. And that is actually a fire hazard, but I don't think it's uh, categorized as a as severe fire hazard. So this is kind of kind of okay, but not really. I would much rather see proper crimping contacts uh, or yeah, there are just better ways of contacting this. Now we see a, a non-fusible resistor. Uh, no fusing whatsoever. Yeah, basically directly goes into the bridge rectifier. Uh, there's the bridge rectifier and then into the pins of a capacitor, which is a well 6.8 microfarad 400 volt. Um, I'm very sorry. I don't know what this is, but that is not uh, a name brand. Well, that's your input filter. There is, uh, yeah, just a couple of surface mount um, resistors that couple directly into this dip, which is apparently the main switcher. And it is an SD6830. Yeah, uh, that's not traceable actually. But it's quite obviously a uh, flyback topology. Only single wave rectified on the output and it has two 470 microfarad, 10 volt. It says low ESR, and they are WT brand uh, capacitors. And it does actually have some feedback, some secondary feedback. That actually does the uh, voltage feedback, so that's nice. The uh, D plus and D minus here. These two pins on the USB, they are just shorted together. So it's just emulating a dedicated charging port or TCP profile. This is most likely something like a TL431 with the uh, capacitor and the uh, resistor bridge. It's actually really bad soldering on that resistor. It's a giant blob. Otherwise the soldering isn't that bad, honestly. But, well, clearance and <laughs> creepage distance. This this is your uh, primary secondary gap. Now, obviously, uh, this only has the live and neutral connections, doesn't have a ground connection. So uh, by law, this has to be uh, double strength insulation, which means the absolute minimum creepage distance has to be, well, technically 6.35 millimeters, but in general. And right here, this, this is like three and a half, maybe four millimeters between these traces. So this is uh, woefully insufficient. This is, I wouldn't quite call it dangerous, but uh, seeing that there is contamination here on the board, this is not something I did. Uh, this is actually some something that was reworked by somebody. Uh, contamination on the board, and especially because the USB port will be a source of contamination coming in. Now, honestly, I've been using this, actually been using it for couple months and there's not that much uh, dirt ingress, but uh, stuff can get in through the USB port. So uh, I wouldn't take chances, uh, chances like this. I would categorize this as almost dangerous. Now there's actually some confusion on the web. I'm surprised this isn't more common knowledge, but um, even on the hackerspace lately, uh, I've had two people complaining about their phone not being very responsive, uh, the, the touch screen not actually responding to their touches or uh, registering multiple touches when they try to use it. And uh, I thought this was common knowledge, but apparently it isn't. Uh, these kinds of power adapters that only have the single wave rectification and probably have bad up filtering in general, uh, they have a lot of uh, output noise. And that noise is uh, going to wreak havoc on your touchscreen controller because capacitive touchscreens they work by capacitively coupling uh, the screen to your fingers, which means they have like an AC voltage, a very low voltage, on the screen. And when you uh, put your finger somewhere on the screen, that finger uh, changes the capacitance to ground. Uh, 
uh, off the screen in a particular way that it can recognize as being a touch event. Now, of course, if the phone is on a charger that is also producing essentially noise, but producing frequencies right around that touchscreen frequency base, then it's going to interfere with the touch functionality. So if you have a low quality charger, uh, you will have trouble operating your phone when it's on the, in this charger. And uh, yeah, that happens with this charger, uh, quite obviously. All right, I have to excuse the uh, hum in the background. That's actually my isolation transformer. I had to install it because uh, this charger is making so much noise that I was having trouble uh, interfacing my power bank. What we're looking at here is the power adapter, the thing we're actually trying to test. Uh, my power meter, my power bank, <laughs> and all of this is connected with uh, my power merger. <laughs> um, I'm not trying to plug my my products, but uh, yeah, all these things are for sale except for the power bank. Uh, still working on that. Uh, but the reason I'm doing this is uh, usually I use my uh, kind of professional uh, power tester to do these kinds of tests. But I thought I'd change it up because uh, power banks can actually be pretty good, pretty well behaved power sinks. So. Why not use it as such? So what I have here is my programmable power bank and I can tell it to uh, draw more or less power uh, via USB, via a computer application. So I will just be telling it to draw more power and we will see uh, probably the voltage sag and we'll see how much current it can ultimately deliver. Note that it is uh, supposed to be rated at five volt, two amps. So we'll see if it can do that. Right now, the current limit is set at 0.1 amps. Uh, it's drawing about 110 milliamps. So we're going to increase that to 0.15. We're going towards one amp. Fine, 5.4 volts still. That is actually really high. I didn't uh, mention that before. 5.4 amps is uh, 5.4 volts. It's way too much. It should be about 5.25. Go at 1.2 amps. Actually, I'll put my microphone closer. It's making an audible whine now. 1.4 and trying to go further, but I think actually the voltage drop on my wires is too much. But I think we can reasonably say that it does actually deliver two amps. So it's okay, it's fine. So the main conclusion here is that actually this power adapter is holding up well. And if I feel it, it is a bit warm to the touch, but it's not too bad. Uh, internally, the power adapter, it's obviously not compliant. Uh, and that would be my biggest gripe. It is actually a little bit of a safety hazard. But it's not nearly as bad as some power adapters I've disassembled before uh, on my blog or on my videos. So in that regards, it's not too bad. Like it's a counterfeit part. And I mean, the 5.5 volts uh, output is very high. This is uh, not nominal. This is not uh, as it should be. But most phones these days there is so much voltage drop over the cable. Uh, most phones are fine with 5.5 volts. Uh, most chips uh, internally, most of the charger chips go up to six volts anyway. Really, the biggest showstopper is the noise, both the electrical noise on the output, which is so bad that just the noise that gets coupled in via this whole construction into the power bank over the USB cable is enough to uh, completely destabilize uh, my power bank uh, firmware and cause USB disconnects. Like That's pretty bad. And uh, obviously the same noise is going to impact touchscreen performance as well. And on that front, it's very hard to give this power adapter a pass in any way. But as a charger, uh, compared to the real shit that comes out of China sometimes, 
uh, I am surprised that something that is obviously a lot lighter and uh, uh, it's obviously a counterfeit and it makes noise that it can still deliver the two amps on the output. That's pretty good. I thought it was kind of fun to use my USB meter and power bank as a power sink. Kind of my fetish, I guess. I like measuring stuff. Anyway, I hope you liked the video and I will see you next time.